Welcome to the interlude with Drew. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Andrew McCain. Welcome to another episode of the interlude with Drew. Today, I have a very special guest. This is Kimberly Joy. You may have heard of her from The Voice, from her own recordings and her own uh, releases. You may have seen her singing backup for J.J. Harrison, Childish Gambino. She is an amazing voice, an amazing gift, an amazing anointing, and an amazing person. Welcome, Kimberly Joy, to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. It's a pleasure. So uh, the first question I've been asking everybody um, recently is how was 2020 for you? Because we all know, you know, we went through a pandemic and it was something nobody saw coming and it kind of knocked a lot of us off, you know, off our course and pulled the rug from under us. How was it for you? Yeah, so 2020 started out amazing. You know, um, in January, I did a live recording. Yep. It was it was great. We had about a thousand people there. We didn't see anything coming. Right. Um, and then by uh, mid February, mid to late February, early March, everything started shutting down. And um, at first, I was scared. I have to be I admit, I was afraid. Um, then as it went on, I just became to get anxious, and it and it was it was difficult. Um, first of all, you know, I do music and ministry full time. Yeah. And so. <laughs> so I didn't have like a day job to fall back on. And, you know, I'm like, okay, well, if churches are shut down and venues are shut down, what am I going to do? Right. You know what I mean? And so it became, it became very difficult. Um, and um, there was a lot of prayer involved, <laughs> um, a lot of meditating, a lot of sleepless nights. Um, but um, we made it through 2020 was rough. It was difficult financially, emotionally, mentally yeah. um you know being cooped up in the house you can't really see anybody mm -hmm. like i realized i hadn't seen my grandmother in a year oh wow. um when i'm used to see right when i'm used to seeing her um at least a couple times a month yeah and so i hadn't seen her in at least a year um because it just wasn't safe you know i hadn't seen friends or family um i hadn't been able to go to church you know doing the virtual church thing um yeah. that was definitely um a pivot um if you right. will but uh I learned a lot in 2020. Um, it was a lot about relying on God. Um, I learned that I had other skills, you know, than just singing, right. um, like tech skills. I started doing um, engineering because I had to, I'm recording engineering because I had to um, record um, sessions like um, oh, wow. for people's projects or for yeah. churches, virtual services um, wow. on my own in wow. my house in a little corner in my room where I have a mic and everything set up. You know, <laughs> got to work nice. with um, a bunch of churches, um, like the Potter's House, and doing virtual choir stuff for them. Oh, nice. um, doors that, yeah, doors that opened up during the pandemic. You know, things that I would have never thought I did. I did a whole bunch of background vocals and features on um, records in my room. Wow, that's amazing. Things I learned, right? Things yeah, I learned yeah, yeah. Um, during the pandemic, and so um, I was sustained. You know, um, and so it was it was a pivot. It was a learning experience. But man, am I glad that. Um, we're coming out of it. You know, it's not over, but we're coming out of it. Things are opening back up. Um, this past weekend, I was just at an event and there were 2000 people in that church oh, singing wow. and giving God praise. And I could have cried. It was beautiful. Right. I can imagine. Yeah. Wow. So you use the word pivot. I think that's like the perfect word. Uh, to describe what we were forced to do. Unfortunately, not everybody was able to do it successfully, but like, how long did, did you, like, did it take before you started thinking, okay, I need to do something and you started to learn how to record yourself uh, singing and stuff like that. And what, uh, what program did you use? I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, so it was, it took me some time. I, I'll say it was a few months before I decided to make that um, switch, um, pivot and like figure out what I could do from home because I'm like, okay, I'm sitting here, I'm running through my savings, like, cause we still got bills, it's a pandemic, yeah. but you still oh, have yeah, bills. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, all right, I, this is not gonna you know, be good. Like, what, what are we gonna do? And I was praying about it. And I had this equipment, um, like this recording equipment for a while. I just didn't use it that much because like I learned engineering and, um, in college, but it just really wasn't the thing that I did. I was like, let me stick to singing. And so I saw it in the corner of my room and the Holy Spirit just said, 
why don't you just set it up? And I'm like, well, I don't have to do anything right now. Mm. I usually just use it for songwriting. He's like, oh, just set it up and see what yeah. happens. I'm like, okay. Um, and literally the day after I set up my little desk and my laptop and my, my microphone, I even like had some like soundproofing gear. And I was like, you know, let me put this up. As soon as I put that up, maybe two days later, I started getting calls oh, to wow. do virtual choirs, to do virtual services. And I'm like, okay, well, let's get back into it. And so at the very beginning of the pandemic, um, I was using GarageBand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. At the now, that that wouldn't I wouldn't you know recommend it. Yeah. But, you know you can finesse. <laughs> That's a good start. It's definitely a good start. <laughs> it's a good start. Yeah. You can finesse. Uh, you can finesse some things. Um, if you know what you're doing, if you watch a lot of YouTube tutorials, yeah. you can figure out how to finesse it and make it work. Um, but then I finally got Logic. I had it years ago, and then you know computers crash and you lose stuff on hard drives. But yeah, I'm I've been using Logic um, mostly to okay. record. Yeah, and like yeah. I, you know, figured out a vocal chain, and I got everything like set up. I got presets. I'm like, okay, like here we nice. are. Yeah. yeah okay, right so you things. use Logic. It's good to know you on the good side. <laughs> 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 All right, so I want to go back to the beginning. So I know um, that you come from a musical family. I know your mom sings, and your your siblings, and I, I believe your dad, and everybody is all musical. Um, so how did you guys? How did you first come into music and uh, realize that you loved it? Yeah, um, music has been a part of my life since I can remember. My parents tell me stories. Um, they were like, we had you and you're our first child, but we weren't, you weren't stopping our life. So they would take me to concerts, you know, oh, yeah. as a baby, as like, as like, you know, a, a baby. And so, uh, yeah, music has always been a part of my life. Um, I, my love for music came from church. Um, my parents are pastors and my grandparents were the pastors before then. My mom played the piano for the choir. And, let, and directed the choir. And so I was always there every rehearsal, sitting on the front row in the adult choir, you know, learning the songs and singing with them. Oh, nice. The only kid, <laughs> the only kid in the adult choir. Um, and it was always my thing, but um, I never really knew I was gonna be a singer or knew that music was gonna be something that I pursued um, because I was really shy as a kid. I was really shy as a kid. Okay. And so, uh, <laughs> And so um, I didn't think that music would necessarily be a path that I pursued. But I want to say when I was about 12 years old, my mom finally convinced me to sing something at church, to, to sing a little piece um, of a song at church. Okay. And I sang it. And first of all, the people jumped up shouting praise and God because they were like, she don't even talk. So she oh, out yeah. here singing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, it was actually good. And I was like, you know what? I felt like in that moment, this is what I'm meant to do. Um, so I've been pursuing music um, ever since. Uh, did a lot of music in, I mean, in high school. And then I went to Berkeley College of Music where I studied okay. yeah. and actually graduated, which I'm oh, excited perfect. about class <laughs> because most people don't. Yeah, that's rare. That's rare. It's called, yeah, it's called the Berkeley curse. Most people don't graduate from Berkeley. And it's, it's fine because I'm, most of the time it's because they got you know a tour or a gig or yeah, something like that. Sense. Oh, yeah, exactly. But um, I finished through there. And yeah, so music has been a part of my life, my whole life. I think I started singing before I started talking. Yeah, it runs deep. It's inside. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, you mentioned Berkeley. So what was that experience like going to Berkeley College? Cause I'm sure you're around a lot of crazy talented mm. people. And I'm sure it was like really rigorous going through or was it was the experience different than that? No, um, it was actually like really, it was an amazing experience. I will say when I first got there, I was intimidated okay. um, because, you know, coming from Connecticut, small state, like, you know, you know, everybody who does music here, you right. know, and so like, you kind of know, like where you stand as far as your talent or what have you. Um, but then you go to a school where it's like people from all over the world, like who are the best at what they do. Yeah. And then you. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was intimidating for a while. Um, but I loved it. The connections I made, um, the things that I learned. Um, I always say my creativity was really sparked from being at Berkeley. It's it's hard not to be when everybody is in that space. It, it just, you know, like you feel it and it jumps onto you. Yeah. Um, I, I loved my experience um there. Um, I studied music business and then I changed my major to professional music. So I have a um, course study in like business law um, and, 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 and in marketing and then songwriting and um, 
like vocal um, things, like vocal performance. Um, so I learned a lot. I learned how to be a background singer at Berkeley. Okay. I took, okay. So I took a couple of clinics on background singing and that's why I was able to do that. Um, but I went to school with some amazing people like Charlie Puth was in my class, you know, oh, wow. like, okay. yeah. So like there was um, Will Gittins, he's pop, um, popping off um, all over um, social media. He's an amazing musician. You know, we had classes together. And so like, it was, it's really cool to say I came from that musical community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can definitely, mm -hmm. definitely imagine that. That's awesome. So you talked about your creativity being sparked while you were at Berkeley. So I wanted to ask, mm -hmm. did you write songs before going there or was that something like you said that was sparked while you were at Berkeley? Yeah, um, before I would try to write songs, like I had this little diary as most girls do, most young yeah. girls do when I was a teenager. And like every now and then it'd be like a couple song lyrics here or there. Um, but it really didn't um, pop off until I got to Berkeley. I didn't fall in love with songwriting until then. Okay. I just figured I like to sing and here's like, you know, a little song that I wrote. They were terrible songs. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. So you didn't write Story of Grace back then. I would never. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> that was newer. No, but um, but yeah, at Berkeley, um, yeah, the, the love for songwriting just really, um, just really grew, and I was like, wow, this is something I want to do, um, like seriously, you know, oh. not just for me, even for other people, and so. Um, yeah, um, I wrote actually one of the songs that I recorded at my recording called The Rock. I wrote it my freshman year at Berkeley. Oh, wow. Okay. Nice. Yeah, it was just on a, on a break. I was just sitting outside and the words came to me. And yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. So growing up and now, so who were your influences when you were younger and who are your vocal influences now? Mm. Um, growing up, we listened to a lot of like commissioned. Oh yeah. Hammond. oh yeah so that was <laughs> i would have to say that was like my number one um influence um yeah that was it it was that maybe um karen clark sheard uh but yeah that was pretty much it um fred hammond all day i, I think that's still to this day he's my favorite gospel artist Me too. like he just really is like yeah. that's just my number one <laughs> <laughs> um but but now um i get influences you know from everywhere um, like, I mean, I love CeCe Winans. Oh yeah. I think she's one of my top vocal influences, um, her, but you know, I also love Toni Braxton and I yeah. also, you know, love, um, like country artists and, you know, I, I listen to everything. I listen to salsa music. Um, Celia Cruz is one of my influences. Like I get, I pull and glean things from yeah. everywhere. Um, to kind of add to what I'm doing because I think if you're not growing as a musician, you're not doing it right. Right, right. Yeah. That's, you know, you should always grow. Yeah, for sure. Now, um, you mentioned Fred Hammond being a huge influence in your life. You're sitting right in front of a piano. Um, I remember you did an Instagram video singing and playing Mender of Broken Hearts. Now I play keys. I know that song is not easy. So no. for you, because I've, I've seen you plenty of times, like, yeah, I'm not really a keys player. For you to be singing, killing it while playing the piano, that 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 was impressive. So how long have you been playing piano? Um, A little bit here and there for most of my life. I'll say okay. I started trying to seriously um, for about maybe six or seven years now. Okay. I still I still maintain that I don't play. Okay. I still I, maintain that I don't play. I, I guess I feel like I'm a, song, I'm a songwriter, you know, so I need something, some kind of, like, I do a little bit of piano. I try a little bit of acoustic guitar. I just don't keep my nails long, um, short long enough to do oh, it right. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, um, I do that just for songwriting. And that song is one of my favorite songs, Men Are Broken oh, Hearts. And it was Valentine's Day. And I was like, you know what? Let me see if I can figure it out. It took me forever. It took me days to figure it out. And it took me about 10 takes to get that video done all the oh, way yeah. through. But, yeah, but I, yeah. I can tell. I can tell. It sounded smooth. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Kudos you. to you for that. I, I love that song so much. But that means a lot, man. You're killing. So I appreciate it. Oh, man. I appreciate that. So you are an artist, of course, but you also sing backgrounds. You talked about learning how to do that at um 
at Berkeley, what would you say is the difference in approach? Like, it's obvious that, of course, if you're the artist, you're the leader, but when you're about to sing backgrounds for someone, what is, how different is your approach? Yeah, um, the approach is completely different. I'll even, um, I'd even venture to say it's more difficult. Yeah, I've heard like, kudos, kudos to all the professional background singers out there. It's not easy. Um, you know, you gotta learn all your parts and background vocal parts can be so intricate. Mm -hmm. Like like things you don't even really hear. If you really right. sit and listen to a record, tune out like the, the lead vocalist and listen to what the backgrounds are doing. Yeah, It's crazy. Oh my gosh, especially on a Brandy record, don't huh? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's totally different. It is, but um, but yeah, there's so many intricacies, um, and then you have to do it with other people. Oh yeah, but the blend oh, is yeah. so important. Mm -hmm. The blend is so important, and then you need to make sure that not only your blend is together, but what you're doing complements the the lead vocalist. You know, you don't want to have this tone that's so far out and away from what they're doing and right. needs to mesh. Yeah. Um, so like. Yeah, background vocals um, are difficult. That's what I learned at Berkeley, that the blend and how to, you know, really sing together and sing with each other. Um, but I'll say um, that one of my biggest influences and the biggest teachers in the background vocal world was um, Denise, De Denise Renee. Denise, oh, okay. now she's called Stout. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's so amazing, she's so amazing. But yeah. she was my biggest influence. Um, she really took me under her wing. Um, that's how I got the Childish Gambino call and I learned so much from her. I mean, from tone to how to blend better, even like stage presence as a background vocalist. Right, right. You know, because it supports. Um, one thing JJ Harrison says all the time, you know, don't have me out here jumping around and y'all just standing still. Yeah, yeah. Like if you give me energy, it gives me energy mm -hmm. to to give to the people. Right. Yeah. 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 So you mentioned you mentioned two artists that I was just about to bring up, Childish Gambino and JJ here. So let's start with Childish Gambino. So you toured with him. What was that experience like? Man, that was, I have to say, hands down, one of the best experiences I've had. Wow. Hands down. Um, I loved working with Childish Gambino. I loved working with the team. They were so cool. They were so professional, but so cool. I found that um, like A-list artists are a lot of times so much nicer. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that too. <laughs> <laughs> these up and comers, you know? Um, but no, I had an amazing time. I got to travel all over the country. Um, I got to do the Grammys with Childish Gambino. You know, I got to do TV with him. Um, it was amazing. Arenas. We did arena tour, like, <laughs> like where the Houston Rockets play. Like, we, that's yeah. where we were singing. Like, it was mm -hmm. so, we sang at, you know, um, Chicago Bulls, um, the, the stadium, like, or oh, the arena. God. Like, wow. got... It, yeah, it was like mind blowing. And to be up there with a crowd of, of tens of thousands of people, it's it's electric. It's electric. The atmosphere is charged, like you can feel it. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my favorite things about the Childish Gambino tour is like um, Donald Glover, his real name, yeah. or his given name, I should say. <laughs> um, he's like a really chill like guy. Mm -hmm. Like he's really chill. He'll talk to you. Like we like like laugh and joke and have a good time. I mean, he's about his business, but I mean, he's a really chill, cool guy, nice guy. Childish Gambino, like when he gets up there, he's like larger than life. Oh, and wow. it was kind of cool to see. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of cool to see those on two different sides. Yeah, I got to tour with them. I sang with Childish Gambino for about two years, maybe two and a half years. Okay. Um, and it, yeah, it was it was really incredible. It was one of my favorite experiences. Yeah, ever. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So you've also um, been singing with JJ Hairston for a uh, mm -hmm. while as well. And this, I know that's like a totally different uh, <laughs> experience, but what has that been like? So I was singing with JJ since I was in college. So it's been upwards of 10 years now. Okay. That, okay. Um, yeah, I started when I was 19. So it's been almost 11 years now that I've been singing with JJ. Um, and I'm grateful to him because he gave me my first shot professionally. Okay. He did. I'd, I'd never done professional background vocals for anybody. Yeah. And um, JJ saw me at some event in Connecticut. And then he somehow got in touch with um, my, um, my manager. And the next thing I know, I was getting a call and he was like, hey, do you want to sing for me? And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sure. I was starstruck. Um, but it's been an amazing experience. I believe I, I was groomed so much there. I learned I learned how to be a better worship leader. 
um, thing in background for JJ Harrison because he's really one of the best to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he really is one of the best to do it. The way he connects the people to God, it's just yeah, yeah, for yeah. Sure. He's he's one of the best to do it. And so I've enjoyed my experience with him, and he's like my big brother. He supports, and even though I don't get to sing with him as much now because yeah. I'm doing my own thing, I'm singing with other artists um that's my big brother he supports he he came and hosted my um live recording right you know in, um last january and um yeah he was there he was there i can reach out to him about you know um songs that i've written like hey can you give me advice um on stuff like that and he's there and so i appreciate that i appreciate oh, that we built family that's definitely that awesome yeah so you mentioned the live recording i wasn't there for the whole thing, but I was able to come at the end. I had another engagement, but I like from the time I walked in, like you said, it was about a thousand people. You could feel all the love in the room. You guys were up there mm. just killing it. And um, it, it, it's, it was, it seemed like it was definitely an amazing night. What was that process like? Like, when did you start to think, okay, I want to, I want to do a live recording and what was the um, process leading up to it? Like, yeah. So um, I had written a whole bunch of songs. Um, it's funny because I'd done a live recording back in 2013. Really? And yeah, and it never came out. It was just something about it. Um, like it sounded great. Like we, everybody was professional and we had the dopest musicians, but it just, by the time I got around to like trying to push it or let anything out from that recording, I was like, this just doesn't feel like the sound anymore. Wow. You know? Yeah. So I was like, let me go back. And we lost some things too. So I was like, let me go back um, and, you know, back into my writing room, back to my prayer closet and figure out, you know, what the sound is supposed to be. And um, and then I just let that go. Started singing, singing covers all over the place. Um, and then I started writing again and writing. And then sometime around summer of 2019, People were asking, Kim, when are you going to release a record? Because I had released um, two singles, Destiny and Abba. I had released two singles. And they're like, when are you going to release an album? And I was like, you know, I have all these songs that I've written. You know, it's like, let's let's do an album. And I reached out to my team. I was like, okay, Jason, how are we going to, you know, make this happen? And we called out. We reached out to Rehoboth, um, who was gracious enough to allow us to use their sanctuary. And they had just renovated it. Yeah. So they had allowed us to use their sanctuary at the top of the year. Um, and, um, I called, up uh, um, Will, um, Will Davis and James Carney. And I was like, bros, like, can you help me produce this record? And we got together. We went through the songs. Um, they told me what was good. They told me what wasn't good. Oh, yeah. We arranged some things <laughs> because everything you write ain't good. It's not, you, it's not, <laughs> it's not, you know, you know. And so um, we got things together and by the end of it, I was just blown away. I was like, wow, this is the sound. And so it took months and months of preparation. Um, I mean, pre-production, um, like pre-recording. Like we had, this is a pro tip. Um, we had recorded the whole album before that night. I heard, I did hear that. We recorded the entire album live mm -hmm. in a rehearsal, maybe earlier that morning. That morning we recorded the that whole morning. thing. Wow. Yep just in case yeah, yeah, yeah. something went terribly wrong. Yeah, so happens. we did pre-production. So yeah, we did pre-production. So we had all the aux stuff recorded. Um, we had, um, what else did we have recorded? Um, background vocal stems recorded pre. So the background vocals didn't have to strain themselves during the um, recording, the live recording. Then we recorded everything the, the, the morning of. And then we did the live recording that night. Wow. And so, and every take was amazing. And so we pretty much just put everything together. Everything together. Wow. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. We just pretty much put everything together. Yeah. Like post-production was not even a thing. We did overdubs on one song. Oh, okay. Wow. That's rare. Overdubs on one song. Yeah. yeah that's it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's a tip. If you prepare. Yeah, prepare. prepare before, yeah, I've been prepare hearing before. that so often. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of I'm sure a lot of people are listening to what you just said, like I am, and thinking, "Wow, you sang and recorded the morning of your recording." 
but I know based on your experience and what you know, you have great vocal stamina. You know how to use your voice. You know how to preserve your voice. Um, for anyone listening, do you have any tips on how to like preserve your voice? And like, cause I'm, I think I've heard you say like, you don't typically lose your voice much. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't typically lose my voice much because I lost it one time yeah. for two months. I remember, I remember. And yeah you remember that because i think i gave my testimony in an event that we were at together right and it was the most terrifying thing i had a vocal injury i had a hemorrhage on one of my vocal cords oh, wow. and um i went to a, a ent um ear nose and throat doctor and he was like you're gonna need to stop singing for at least six weeks and then we'll come back and assess and i was terrified because i'm like this is what i do yeah yeah like i had literally like just yeah, at the time I had just quit my day job. <laughs> and I was like, uh, this yeah. is what I do. Right, perfect timing yeah. to lose your voice. I was like, this is what I do. How am I going to do it? And um, so it was scary. So when that healed up, I decided to learn how to sing correctly. And I went to Berkeley and I knew what was right, mm -hmm. but I had to unlearn the bad habits that you learn on the road from just making it happen or just right. being in church we get excited and we start screaming and yeah, you know you do it. Yep. yeah you can't do it so i would say like tips stay hydrated mm -hmm. that's like the number one thing especially on the road it's so easy to be dehydrated stay hydrated drink a lot of water i try to do at least a half gallon a day yeah. but a gallon a day is ideal mm -hmm. stay hydrated it's um because your body when your body is healthy your, your instrument is healthy right yeah that's one thing about the voice like if you're sick you sound crazy mm -hmm. because it all has to do with your body the wellness of your body um warm up and the bigger the voice you have the more you need to warm up right so like i was told i went and took vocal lessons again voice lessons again to relearn how to sing okay because i had lost a lot of it and um she told me she's like you need to warm up for your voice you need to warm up at least 30 minutes before you sing mm -hmm. Yeah. for 30 minutes just doing vocal warm-ups because there's so much going on when you have a bigger voice when you have a louder voice and i'll say as um like as black people as african-american we tend to have boomier voices um we tend to have voices that project project a little louder yeah. and so that's a lot of um power in a small space right right yeah that's true and so we need to yeah so we need to make sure we warm up um, warm up, not just your um, like voice, like doing vocal warm ups, but like warm up your body. Mm -hmm. Do some jumping jacks. Like go for like a jog. Like being active really um helps warm up your voice as well. So take care of yourself, and you'll be fine. Yeah, and yeah, sleep, that's... sleep. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got to do that. Yeah, that's that's yeah. great. That's great advice. Um, so a couple years ago, you had the opportunity to be on The Voice, and it was an incredible thing to see. We were all, you know, I'm not from CT, but you know, we we that live in CT were all like so, so happy for you. So it was so great to see what you were doing because not only were you on there and people, you know, getting exposure for the great voice and talent that you have, but you were also being a light, like going on there singing mm -hmm. gospel music, not just once, but like over and over and over again. And that's yeah. not something that you typically see. Can you talk about um, not only the experience, but like your, uh, thought process coming into it and what you, you know, aim to do. Yeah. Um, so the voice was something that I had never planned on doing. Mm -hmm. um, I'd seen the show. I loved watching the show, but I was like, I'm not a competitive person. Well, no, that's not true. I'm competitive, <laughs> but like vo vocal competitions and definitely not in front of people. Like if I have to lose in front of somebody, I'm very embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, ah, that's a lot of work. I'm like, I don't, you know, I'm not into voice competitions. I like to watch them, but I never thought I would do one. Um, but then a few years prior, my cousin had been on, um, oh my God, sister, she had been on. And she um, told me maybe a couple of years later, she's like, hey, the voice reached out to me and they're looking for singers. So I sent them your information. Oh. And I said, I said, why would you do that? You know, I don't want to <laughs> go on any show. She was like, well, you know, if you see something, just, you know, you can decide what to do. And then two years went by. So I just let it go. And then one day I get an email and it's from somebody from casting for the voice. And they're like, hi. So we had your name in our files and we looked you up on Instagram and we like what you're doing. Would you be interested in auditioning for the voice? By this time, they were late in the process. So they had already done their like um, worldwide or countrywide auditions. 
Okay. Um, and they're open calls. And they're like, well, we, we're still short singers. We haven't found what we need. So if you would just send us in a couple of videos, um, then if you get through, you're coming to LA to do the show. Yeah. So I was, I was on the road. I had just gotten back from Jamaica and then I was in Syracuse, New York, New York. And I was in my hotel room and I was like, okay, I was preparing for another recording, background vocals. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, okay, in my hotel, let me record this. And I did um, record a couple of audition tapes, sent it into them. And they loved it. And they're like, okay, you're coming to LA to do your blind audition. Wow. And from beginning to end, it was a lot. It was amazing. It was stressful. Um, but it was a beautiful experience. And I'm glad I did it. I would never have the confidence I now have, have to be who I am. Yeah. Um, not just as a vocalist, but as a gospel artist. Yeah. Because I had to fight for that thing. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, like for marketability, you know, they'll be like, well, why don't you do an R&B song this week? Or why don't you do? And I did that for a little bit. Right. Yeah. But the second they let me do Break Every Chain. Oh, man. Yeah, that was. I was like, all right, now this powerful. <laughs> Listen, and so I was like, this is how it's gonna be, and they agreed because um the label loved it. Um, um we we recorded a few songs and they were released um by um Republic um Records, yeah. and the label loved it because it was number one for two weeks on the Billboard charts. Oh man! So that did so that did yeah. good for them. So they were yeah. like, yeah, you can do any song you want to do. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. Yeah, but I enjoyed my experience. Um, my coach, Kelly Clarkson, she was the best, the absolute best. Even after the show, she brought me out on tour with her um, to sing when she came through Connecticut. Right, yeah. So it was, it was great. It was a great experience. Um, the exposure was great. I never went on to win. Mm -hmm. I went on for exposure. And then they said, if you make it to the live shows, um, you get custom mold in-ears. So I was like, okay, well, then I just want to make it to the first one so I get my custom in-ears yeah. and I can be out. Like, I don't need to win. <laughs> I don't need to win. Just let me yeah. get these custom ears. And I got them. And let me get these custom ears. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a nice little perk. I need, I need to get me some customs. I've been waiting. So yeah. I, I feel that all the way. <laughs> so um, a part, you know, so obviously that gave you a lot more exposure, a lot more mm -hmm. followers and everything like that. And um, a part of what you do on social media is like you do now, like uplifting quotes, Bible verses, different mm -hmm. things to kind of encourage people. Like, um, did that start pre-pandemic, during the pandemic, or was that just something that you had always been doing off, off and on? Yeah, that had always been something I've been doing off and on. Um, I'm kind of a preacher. I don't talk about it a lot. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I talk about oh, it yeah. a lot. Yeah, I'm actually I'm an ordained elder, but um okay. I just always yeah, and I've always <laughs> wanted to um encourage people um right. because we go through a lot. Um yeah. I I went through a really dark time mm -hmm. and it had been really nice if I saw somebody being transparent and talking right. about, you know, how they're going through. Like I'm not too saved to be like, Yeah, there was a portion of my life where I was depressed, or there was a portion of my life where I experienced anxiety, you know, and so whatever uplifting thing I can give um whatever quote I can put up I'll do that um I was doing it pre-pandemic but especially during the pandemic right um because I knew like I needed it and so somebody else would yeah yeah that's really good so um speaking of being in a low place at um a point in time I remember you talking about how the album uh free by Kier shared Mm -hmm. really helped you out in uh like while you were going through a dark time can you talk about how it was music or someone's music that was able to uplift your spirits and how that helped you and how it inspired you to be that for someone else. Yeah. Um, you know, when we're in it, like, well, I'll say from my standpoint, like doing gospel music, like I know like my job is to like encourage and uplift and like speak the gospel through my music. Um, but you never really know what impact it has until you're in that place where you feel like there's no hope. Right. You know, when you feel like you don't have anywhere to turn to, when you feel like this is it, this is it. I just want to be done. I just want it to be over. Um, I was in such a dark place. I was so depressed. And all I could do was sit on my floor and cry. Wow. And yet yeah, by myself at my apartment, just crying. Um, and the free album had maybe just come out two weeks prior. And I was doing anything to calm myself down. Yeah. Um, and so I just let the album play or just let music play. I think I turned gospel music on on my iPhone and just let it play. And then that song came on. 
And when she started singing, my redeemer has saved me from sin. My soul is awakened, I win. Free from what held me, free from what formed me mentally, you captured me. When she got to that part, I broke out in tears, but it, was, it wasn't the same tears I was crying before. Okay, yeah. It was tears of release. Wow. Because I realized that I've been holding on to so many things for so long. And that's what was weighing me down. And music was my release. And even then I began writing and, 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 it, and it brought me to a, a lighter place where I was able to have the courage to ask somebody for help. Wow. You know what I mean? When I was that, I was able to have the courage to talk to my pastor and talk to my friends and seek a counselor um, to get out of that dark place because it's really really tough to do it alone and so I said after that moment you know I want to be somebody who helps heal through music um I have friends at Berkeley that were studying music therapy and I always thought it was a weird (laughs) a weird thing to do but like you never realize how much music not just the words but even sounds yeah sounds affect the way that we feel and and, in the way we release emotions i'll bring it to church even in church right the spirit can be high yeah and everybody's excited but when that organist gets on there and starts playing those certain chords it's something totally different. right it's something shifts yeah it's a cue and then somebody starts running around somebody starts dancing even a preacher's preaching and he's getting to a good part and the organist starts backing him up Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it gives him the energy and the strength to keep going Yep. Yeah, music is an important tool um, to, 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 to help uplift and to help strengthen and to bring peace. Um, in the Bible, it talks about David um, before he was king, be- even after he was anointed as king, before he became king, he played harp for Saul. Yep, yep. To stave away those demonic forces that were messing with his mind. Right. That's the power of music. Right. It's, it's freedom, it's peace, it's encouragement. It's nourishment for the soul and the mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm I'm so I'm I'm grateful as I'm sure you are and so many your family and everybody that in that moment that music a particular song was able to minister to you. Cause I remember when I first heard the album and that song in particular, I wasn't really going through nothing, but I, I was like, oh wait a minute, let me stand up. Like what's going on? Like, what am I feeling right now? That, that song is powerful, especially like towards the end when she starts crying and stuff. I'm like, whoa, this yeah. is crazy. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That that album is I, I wouldn't say it slept on, but to me it's a classic. That that is just a great it project. Is. It great is great project. So um what are some things about you that people wouldn't typically know? Like things you like to do, things that you have done, or just things about you. Yeah. Um, most people wouldn't think that I'm like a complete goofball. Like <laughs> I love to make jokes, I love to make people laugh. Um, I, somebody said it's because like when I speak, I really am careful with my words and I try to, you know, make sure what I'm saying is clear, but man, I like to have fun. I like to joke around. Um, also, um, I have this like a hobby of um, photography. I like to take pictures of things oh, okay. and people and, and yeah. Um, so I'll do that on the side, not professionally at all. So don't try to book me cause I'm not going to do a <laughs> session, <laughs> but yeah, um, I like photography. And I also do a little bit of graphic design. Again, don't try to book me. I'm not going to do it. But <laughs> um, I like to do that. Um, yeah, uh, I have those kind of hobbies. I love to cook. Okay. Um, I'm a baker. Um, I might, if you follow my Instagram every now and then, you'll see me like baking some like banana bread or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that might be something that people don't know. Okay, that's awesome. So, um when you take your pictures for Instagram, is that, is, do you have somebody do it or do you like kind of set it up and take them that way? Um, sometimes I set them up and take them. Okay. Um, once in a while, I have a friend around that I can like direct to take the picture, but most of the time it's me setting it up. Okay. Setting it up yeah. and taking a picture. Cause I was starting to wonder, I was like, does Kimberly have a personal photographer or something? Like <laughs> <laughs> next level, these ain't no regular iPhone pics and stuff. That's, that's dope. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So I know you talked about the Childish Gambino uh, moment. I mean, the the tour being your favorite um, experience. Do you have any other 
particular moments on stage that really stick out to you, like a particular venue, concert, anything mm -hmm. uh, that really sticks out in your memory? Yeah, I have um, two. So one was the Grammys, which I'll just give me now. Um, that was an incredible experience. And um, fun facts, most recorded TV shows, the black background vocals don't sing live. Oh. But he fought for us to sing live. Okay. He yeah. said, no, I need them to sing live. He said, matter of fact, I have a particular part that's not on the track, the backing track. So like, I need them to sing live. Right. And so we stood up there and we were the only people that sang live that, <laughs> <laughs> wow. that night. And I was, I was singing and I was standing right next to Gail King and she was sitting right there where I was. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is really cool. I'm standing next to Oprah's best friend. Oh. Right, yeah. wow. <laughs> so that was a really cool moment. And I mean, it's the Grammys as a musician, as an artist, like that's like the accolade of accolades, you know right. what I mean? That's where we all dream to be. And so to be able to be there and to perform was a dream come true. It was an amazing moment. Um, and then, uh, okay, I have three moments, okay. Another moment <laughs> was with JJ Harrison. Um, we were in the Dominican Republic at this prophetic worship conference and we were singing and there was of course a language barrier because uh, most people there speak Spanish. Yeah. We were in an arena, like a, like a football or soccer stadium, maybe about 50 to 80,000 people. Oh, wow. And we were doing, you deserve it. Okay. And JJ looked at me and he said, you sing in Spanish, right? Remember, because like you lead worship at Spanish. I was like, yeah. He was like, Okay, so I'm gonna need you to lead You Deserve It in Spanish. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, let's do it. And it was a beautiful experience when I opened my mouth and started singing in Spanish. I can't remember the words though, because I don't speak Spanish, I just sing it. Oh, <laughs> I can't remember the words right now. But, um, um, all right. Eres no, something like that. You deserve it. And the crowd erupted in worship. They were already worshiping God because the presence of God was there. but they when they could understand they connect, it yeah it's totally different yeah it was a completely different connection like we were connected through the spirit of the lord but when they could understand it because it was at their level mm -hmm. like the way they just their their voices cried out and like it was just the most beautiful powerful thing because they were hungry in that moment like hungry for the presence of god hungry for the word like it was top notch and then the third experience was on the voice doing oceans Okay. So the week after I did Break Every Chain, I did Oceans by Hillsong. Yeah. And I was happy because they let me sing that song. It was one of my favorite songs. It's another song that helped me when I was in my low moments. Yeah. Um, and I was singing some part of the song. I think I was saying, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And I lifted my hands in worship because I was, yeah. I was in. I was yeah, like, this is a beautiful moment. And I opened my eyes. And the whole crowd had their hands lifted. Wow. And that thing, that thing blew my mind. Cause this is not church. Yeah, at all. Yeah. This is a secular stage, you know? Yeah. And that, that was a really powerful moment. It was super powerful. So, wow. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really incredible. Like, like I said, it's, it's great that you were able to be a light in that atmosphere because yeah. the truth of the matter is a lot of those people might never step foot in a church. So when you can bring that anointing and the power to them and have let them have a, an encounter in a place where they didn't anticipate it, that's something truly, truly incredible. Yeah, and it was funny because somebody on staff pulled me aside after and they said, thank you for bringing Jesus to the voice. Wow. And I was like, that was all I needed. I was like, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. That in yeah. your in-ears. <laughs> you get that in the in-ears. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, Kimberly, thank you so much for doing this interview. This was so informative. It was enjoyable. I truly appreciate you taking the time out to do this. Um, I have one last question. When can we expect this album? I can't wait to hear the whole thing. Yeah, the album is in the works and we should have a release date coming soon. Um, stay tuned to my social media at Kimberly Joy on everywhere, Facebook, um, Instagram, even YouTube. Check out on my social media and you will have a date really really soon you've been working hard there might even be another song on there that you might not have heard that night so okay you know okay. um and be anticipating um something really very soon that's Perfect. all i can say
Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Looking forward to that for sure. Once again, this has been the interlude with Drew featuring special guest Kimberly Joy. Thank you once again. I truly appreciate your time and uh, being a part of this. As I always say at the end of the episodes, only what you do for Christ will last. Take it one day at a time and keep it pushing. This has been another episode of the interlude with Drew. Until next time, I'll catch you. It's the interview with Drew. <laughs>